Hello everyone, welcome to our live class deep dive into programs. My name is Jen, I'm a customer success manager here at Healthy and today I'll be walking you through how to use programs in Healthy. So we'll dive into how the programs can enable you to build, compile and distribute resources and content on a specific topic to an audience of your choosing. We'll focus on, of course, two main areas of the platform. First, our programs page where we build out the actual content for our program. And we'll also dive just a bit into building out a package which lives under the billing section in client packages. Packages are how you have clients themselves enroll into a program or purchase a program on their end. The program is the actual content and the modules itself, whereas packages is how you offer that to clients. The program's feature and functionality is only available on Plus Plan and above. So Plus Plan, Group Plan, and Enterprise Plan. If you're interested um, and need to upgrade to one of those plans in order to start using and building out programs, don't hesitate to reach out to our support team, hello at gethealthy.com, and they can certainly help you take care of that. We'll, of course, go ahead and start on our programs page today. And I just want to touch on uh, getting familiar with different areas of this page. So first, we have our active programs list, but we can also filter to see archived programs. So you always have the option, rather than deleting a program altogether under that edit, uh, the arrow next to the edit option there, rather than deleting it, we can also simply archive a program so that we can later reference that program. Let's go ahead and archive this program. We can filter to our archived programs and we can reference that program. Um, we can reactivate that program. So maybe we just want to clean up this active programs page, but we might want to use this down the road. We could certainly do that. And then I could come in here and unarchive my program. We can also filter by program start type. So we can filter to see just our rolling start programs or our fixed start programs. And we'll talk in more detail about rolling start versus fixed start and what these mean when we go to build out a program. And of course, we can search for our program as well. So I'll go ahead and search for my deep dive program to just find the one that I'm looking for. In the upper right hand corner, we can create a program from scratch. So we could click to create program. And here we'll be prompted to start editing and building out our program. And then we also have a few options on each program themselves. First is view where we can get an overview of the program information. So I can see the program info, you know, description and title, any description video that I've added and embedded. I can get an overview of my modules and I can also click in to preview those modules as well. So if I click on view, I can go ahead and see what my clients will see when they're moving through this program. And I can click on that menu as well to toggle between different modules. I also can go to edit it, which we'll do in a moment, um, but under that arrow next to edit that we clicked on for a moment to view archive versus delete, we have a couple additional options as well. First is copying a program. This essentially means duplicating it. So maybe I want to create a version two of that program and edit that version, uh, but not affect my original version of a program. That's one use case for copying a program. Um, or I want to build out a new program that has a similar structure to a previous one that I've built out. So I could use the, the formatting and the structure of that previous program. I could copy it, but then I might want to just edit a bit of the content in that new version. And you also have the option to share a program with a colleague. So this gives you the, the option to email a template or the template of that program really to another provider that uses Healthy outside of your organization. So if you have any colleagues that aren't on your Healthy account, but you might want to share uh, that program with and have them be able to edit their own version and you use your own version without affecting each other's, you could certainly just enter their email address and that will add it to their account. Today, we're gonna to go ahead and click into edit an existing program. And that'll be a pretty similar view to if we were to create a program from scratch, which we clicked into a moment ago. So I'm gonna to click to edit my deep dive program here. This first tab is the basic program information. So cover image, title, description of the program, option as well to add uh, benefits to the benefits section. You can also add an intro or description video 
to your program. So you would simply link it from wherever, uh, whatever third party hosting site your video lives on. And then at the very bottom, we have that program type. This is what I referenced on those filters on the programs page. And there is a tooltip here. So I'll talk through what these start types mean, but if you ever need to reference it, it is under this tooltip um, to, to give you a bit more information at any time about what that field is or does. So first option is a rolling start program. This is similar to a self-paced course where a client could enroll in this program at any time or purchase this program at any time and move through it um, with their day one of the program being the day that they enrolled in the program itself. So I might have someone who purchases my program on January 1st and they'll receive that day one content on January 1st. They'll receive the day five content based on their day one, day 10 based on their day one, so on and so forth. Whereas another client might purchase and enroll in that program on January 15th and they would have that January 15th date set as their day one. So those two clients and however many purchase my program would be receiving that content and moving through it uh, based on their own unique day one. Whereas fixed start could be used if you want to move a cohort of clients together at the same pace through a program. So if I select fixed start, I'll have the option to go ahead and set my start date for the program. For this, I'm gonna go ahead and set it for the new year, January 1st. Um, and that means that I might you know, market this program and sell this program and clients might be purchasing uh, and enrolling in this program all throughout November and December, but none of them will receive that day one content until January 1st. Then on January 1st, all of those clients who have purchased my program will receive the day one content. Then of course, they'll have the same day one and so they'll receive day two, day three, day four, five, so on and so forth at the same time. If I set fixed start, I do have the option to allow for late enrollment. And this is exactly what it sounds like. Uh, this enables, or you can disable it, of course, um, but this allows clients, if you do turn the setting on, to purchase or enroll in that program after the start date, in this case, January 1st. If for this example, I have a client, I turn the setting on and I have a client enroll in my program on January 5th, they will automatically receive the content or the modules that have been released to that cohort up until that time. So that would be day one through five content. And then they'll move through, through the program at the same pace as the rest of the, my clients that are in that program. All right. The next tab here is the modules tab. So the modules tab and the modules themselves are the actual content of the program. So this is the content that's going to be dripping out to my clients. You can see I have several built out already. Um, so let's just take a quick moment to see an overview of what all of this information means. First, we have the day, of course, that that module releases on. I've been referencing that day one and then that uh, day frequency a bit already. So here you can see what modules are releasing on what day. You can have multiple modules releasing on the same day. You can see on day one, I have a couple going out, day two, but then on day three, I just have one module going out. You can certainly skip days. So down here, you can see I go from day 10 to day 25. You can set that frequency completely up to, to what you need. And we can also have the title. We have a little icon representing the type of module that that is. And we'll talk about what that content type is in a moment when we add a new module. I can view that module and go ahead and make edits to it if needed. So in this case, this is a form within my program and it would take me to that edit view to edit that form. I can also click edit to edit the module structure within my program. So in this case, when I click edit, it will allow me to edit the title, the day that the program become, the, the module becomes available to clients the day that the module becomes available to clients within the program. And then in this case, because there are multiple modules releasing on this day, it gives me the option to reorder the modules. So right now, this is the first module being released on this day, but I could go ahead and reorder them by saying, I want this to be the second one that, uh, that shows up on that day. 
And then I can also toggle on the setting that we'll also see when we build out a new module, which is requiring the client to complete this module before accessing the next one. You can set this on for all of your modules, none of your modules, just some of them, completely up to you on a module by module basis. But again, this would require the client to complete this module before gaining access to any of the next ones, even if those ones have already been released. So if I have multiple modules being released on the same day, I could still, uh, in a sense, lock those subsequent modules until this one is completed. I can update that and you'll see that it just reordered them because I had changed the order of those modules. And then I, of course, can delete them if I need to remove any modules from the program. I'm gonna scroll down to the bottom now and we'll talk through adding a new module. So when I build out a new module, I'll of course have to title it at the day that it releases on. So let me go ahead and title it. Let's make this available on the day 35. And then I'm going to select the content type for this module. There are five different content types that a module can be. The first one is a form, and this will live within the program and function similar to how it does uh, and similar to how forms function outside of a program. So if I click on this drop down here, I can select any forms in my form library that I've already built out. And I can also click to add a new form right from here. So if I haven't built out, out that form yet, I could go ahead and title the form. And then when I click to add the module, it'll take me to build out my form. So now I can drag and drop those questions. I can edit them and build out that program form as needed. Since I'm building this straight from my program, it already is living as a program form. Um, so if I do want to have this form be available as a general, let's say a general intake form, and maybe I want to be able to send this um, outside of the program or include it in an intake flow, something along those lines, I would want to convert it to an intake form. But if this is just living in my program, then we can leave it just as a program form itself. I can click to go straight back to my program and continue to build out those modules as needed. But just quickly, let's pop to the forms library. And we can see here that that form has now been added to my forms library. And if I filter to program forms within my form library, I'll see that these are my forms that I have living uh, under programs that are built into my programs themselves. All right, let's click back to programs. Let's go back into edit my modules. And we'll see here that that form has been added to day 35 of my program. The next module type that we can add, let's go ahead and make this for day 36, is a document. Similar to forms, this gives me the option to add any of my documents that exist in my documents library. So if I click on that drop down, I can go ahead and select any of those documents that already exist or I can click to add a new document and it'll give me the option to upload this document directly to my module. Our next option is a goal. So I can go ahead and build out a goal for my client, similar to how I would if I'm adding it directly to their profile outside of a program. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and add a favorite here, add a description and create that goal. I like to call out here uh, how the goal releases to the client based on the day. And there is a tool tip to reference this as well. Um, but this day that I set for the module to become available to the client is when the goal releases to the client. So this is not the target day. If, for example, I set this for day 10, this does not mean that I want my client to accomplish this goal by day 10. It means that on day 10, this goal will be released and begin applying to my client. The next content type is a video, similar to adding it into the description of, uh, or the you know description video or intro video section of a program or a package. This video will live on a video hosting platform. Common ones are YouTube, Loom, and Vimeo. And then you'll grab the sharing link for that and just add it right here. That will embed the video right into the program, right on the screen. So your client will not need to uh, click out of healthy to go view that video. They won't be redirected out of healthy. It will embed the video right within their program, but you simply need to add the link 
um, to the video in order to add it to your program. Let's actually go ahead and grab a link. I have one right in my description section here. So let's use that link and we'll add it so that you can take a look at what that looks like. We'll add this as day 36 and add module. So I'm just gonna go to the view option and I'm going to view or preview this module. And you can see that this video is now embedded onto, uh, onto my page here and I don't need to click out of healthy to view it. All right, we'll go back to our module to edit it again and talk through the last content type, which is an email. Program emails can be customized in the same section um, of your settings that your customizable email notifications that go out to clients are built out. So we're actually going to click into the settings in a moment so that I can show you where those are built out. But let me just go ahead and also call out that similar to our forms and our documents, we can go ahead and select from the drop down program emails that we have already built out, or we can click to add a new program email and title it right here. When we click add, we'll be taken to build out that email. In this case, let me use an existing one and just show you um, how we can go ahead and adjust that email content. So if I were to add this and then I want to edit it at a later date, I could simply go to my settings wheel in the upper right hand corner. I'll click into settings. And then on our settings page under features, we have email templates. This is where you could build out, again, all of those custom email notifications, customizable email notifications that go out to clients. And one of those options to toggle to is program emails. So now I can go ahead and select the email that I've already added to my program and I could customize that content. I can preview what that email will look like and then I can save it. So now that content is updated in my program. When a module lives as an email, it will of course send an email, that email to my client and it'll appear right in my client's email inbox um, with what I've added, but they can also reference it when they're back into their healthy portal and clicking through the program itself. So if they ever want to reference the information in that email, they don't have to necessarily search through their email inbox. It will live uh, right within the program, within Healthy. They can click through it and reference it in their, their module menu as needed. And just to highlight that last additional option when building out a new module is the one that we already discussed, requiring a, a client to complete the module before accessing the next one. Our last tab when building out a program is the clients tab. This is where you as the provider or an organization member first could manually enroll a client or a client group into a program. So let's say you have a free program that you have as an option to offer to clients on an as needed basis. And maybe I am working with a client, I'm on a session with them and I decide this program would be really beneficial for them to move through. I'm gonna go ahead and enroll them into my program, because this is a rolling start program, this one that I'm in right now, it does give me as the provider the option to select a very specific date. So even though it'll default to their day one being the current date, I could certainly go ahead and say, I want them to start this program on this specific date and time. This is also where we can adjust start dates and of course see an overview of the clients that are enrolled within the program, but it's also where I can remove clients from a program. So if I ever need to revo revoke access for any reason and remove a client from a program, I could go ahead and just click on that X and remove uh, their ability to access the program and the modules. All right, so that's an overview of the actual program itself. Next, we're going to click into our packages section under billing, client packages, and talk through how we build out a package in order to have clients enroll themselves in a program uh, and purchase a program. So here we have our packages page. Packages are not limited just to adding programs. You can add all types of services to packages. So you can add appointments, products, lab testing, but of course, in this case, we are going to talk through how to utilize a package to sell a program. We have similar, we have, 
we have a similar view uh, and similar options on our packages as on our programs page. So under the view arrow, we have the option to preview, edit, archive, copy, or delete a package. We'll also talk through in a moment this charge option here. We'll also talk through the sharing button. In this case, we're going to go ahead and edit this deep dive programs package and talk through what that looks like tying our program that we just built out to a package. Of course, in the upper right hand corner, we have that option though, always to build out a program, uh, a package, sorry, in this case from scratch. So, so we'll go ahead and edit this package. And the first page is of course our package information where we title the package, add a description, optional description video, and a few other settings. When you are offering a program through a package, or in other words, using a package in order to sell a program, you'll likely want to make sure that that package information matches pretty closely, if not identically to your program that you're offering. So I'm going to go ahead and make this title. Since our program is called Deep Dive, I'm going to go ahead and title this package Deep Dive Program. I then am going to add a description. I might just copy and paste my program description here. This is another uh, spot that you might want to, you know, if you want to add a disclaimer up front before somebody purchases a package or a program, you could add that here as well. I could also link that intro or description video of my program to the package. And then I can set the package visibility. So package visibility is referencing who out of your active clients, so those clients who can log into their client portal within your organization and healthy, who out of those clients can see this package as available to purchase within their portal? I could set it to having all of my clients being able to see the package and purchase it, only certain client groups, and I can also hide it from all of my active clients. Keep in mind, no matter what you select here, including this hide package from all clients, you could still share the package, or in this case, the program, via a sharing link outside of Healthy. So people could still purchase it externally. This is just you know, calling out and setting who can purchase it within their client portal. And then I have an automation at the bottom to be able to place a client into a specific client group when they purchase this package. If, for example, I'm offering a 30-day program, you know, maybe a 30-day challenge program, and I want to place clients into a 30 day challenge client group when they purchase it, I could turn that on here. And that would automate uh, maybe an intake flow that goes to this group and any other automations that I wanna set up related to that client group. In this example, I'll go ahead and leave that off and click to the next tab, the included items on the package. So a package can hold, again, I mentioned before, sessions, programs, products, and labs. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and add a program that we just built out to this package. And now this is saying when someone purchases this package, they're going to receive this program. I could combine some of these services. So I could certainly say, you know, along with my program, I'm going to offer a 30 minute consult. I could add that if I'd like. I can add multiple sessions. I could add a product, maybe a journal that comes with starting my program, um, anything that I need to and combine those different services. And then on the last page, we have pricing. So this is where I'll set the price for this package. You can certainly set a package to $0 and have it be a free package or a free service. And this won't require the client to enter their billing information in order to uh, receive the service. In this case, I'll go ahead and set a price to my package. I'm going to leave the frequency as one time. So this is your typical purchase flow uh, where you see a service or an item that you want to purchase, you enter your billing, and you click buy and you receive that. One-time transaction. But on packages, you do have the option to set up reoccurring billing. So if, for example, I want to offer a program that's really a monthly membership, uh, maybe I'll do it until the client decides to cancel, or in this case, I'll set a six-month monthly reoccurring membership. I could go ahead and set that billing frequency and number of billing periods here. I could enable a different price for my first payment. So maybe I want them to pay for half of the program up front, and then after that, I'm going to have them pay a certain amount uh, per payment. I could do that. In this case, I'll disable that and just leave it as a one-time or a, a single pricing option, and I'll just set it back to my one-time 
frequency. Healthy utilizes Stripe for payment processing. So you don't need a separate Stripe account. Um, it's included in your membership. This is a backend integration, but there is a credit card processing fee associated with Stripe. So when you're setting your price, you can look at this note over here that will tell you after the fees are removed, this is what you will receive for that payment. I then can choose to either charge the client immediately for the package, in this case for my program, or I can opt to have them receive it, but charge, go back and charge them at a later date. In this case, I'll have it be charged immediately. So the client sees the item they want to purchase. In this case, my program, they enter their billing information and they are charged immediately for it. And then I can also turn on gifting. In this case, it would give the, purchase, the person that is purchasing the program the option to gift it to someone else. So they would be able to select that this is a gift. They would enter their information to receive the receipt, and then they would enter their recipient's information to receive the service, in this case, access to the program. And I'll go ahead and update my program or my package. All right, so now I have that deep dive program package built out. And from here, I have a few more options. So first, I wanna note this charge option. When we were building out our pricing, I noted that you can toggle on the option to, instead of charging immediately, charge at a later date. So if I turn that on and I see that someone has uh, received this package and I want to now go back and charge them, I could go ahead and come back to my package here, click on charge and charge them this way. I can also, with this arrow, request the payment. So I could send that request to them to pay for it. And then I can also grab a sharing link directly to this package from here. So if I click on share on the package itself, I can toggle to sharing link. I can select whatever primary color for that booking flow that I would like to. I can copy it. And now I can you know, link this in an email signature, share it on social media. I can uh, associate it with a button on my website. And when somebody clicks on that call to action, they'll be taken to the purchase flow to purchase this package, again, in this case, the program. You'll see on this page, we have the option to apply a promo code. So the packages page does give you the option to offer promos or discounts on your services. Under the more option in the upper right hand corner, we can go ahead and select manage promo codes. And here you can see my list of promo codes that I have built out. I could create a new one by clicking on create promo code. I'll go ahead and create new year 15. I'll make this 15% off. Um, let's have it expire on January 15th of the new year. And I'm going to limit this to a specific package. So in this case, let's say I want to just have it apply to this deep dive program. A couple of other options too. If this is a subscription service, that example I used was the six month um, membership that I had momentarily built out, I could certainly say how many payments out of those reoccurring payments do I want it to apply to? Maybe I want to apply this discount to all six payments or just one of them. And then I can set a usage limit as well. If I want to market this promo as saying the first 50 people to purchase this package uh, receive a discount, I could set that usage limit to 50. And then I can create that and market that promo code to my leads and my clients. When someone has purchased a package and paid for it, and of course, anytime they pay for any of my services within Healthy, we'll see that payment history live on the packages pay, on the payments page, I'm sorry. So that payment history would live here. Pack, uh, the payments page has, of course, several different areas, and we do have a deep dive class for packages and payments specifically. So if you want to spend a bit more time getting familiar with this, page as a whole, I certainly recommend that class. But we can also toggle quickly between a few different views here. The next option is our invoice history, where we can certainly create an invoice related to a specific package and send that to our client to pay for it. And we can see here if they've made that payment, if it's still outstanding. We can see transfer history of those payments that we're receiving into our bank account. And then we can see any card issues as well. So let's say maybe somebody purchases a six month subscription program uh, or package and on month three, their credit card expires. That will appear here so that I can follow up with that client to resolve their billing information. I can also charge my client from this page. So I could go ahead and click charge. 
And then I can also record an outside payment. So if, for example, I'm working in person with a client and they say, yeah, I want to go ahead and you know purchase that program that you're offering, um, but I want to pay you in cash. I could certainly record that payment here, say how much that they paid, and add some notes that this is for my package deep dive. And now that will live in my payment history. I have to go ahead and select an accurate date. There we go. And you'll see I'm getting this banner here um, highlighting that if I want to set up payment processing for my account, I do need to add my bank account information. So keep that in mind if you're offering programs and or packages for a uh, set price and you want to manage that payment processing through Healthy. In order to enable that backend Stripe integration, you just need to add your bank account information. So I could go ahead and follow this banner or at any time I could go to my settings page and go to financial. And I would just go through the flow here to add my financial information. And then I can begin processing those payments through Healthy for my programs and for my other packages. I wanna come back to payments quickly as well to just talk through creating an invoice for a package. So I can certainly go ahead and create invoice and select package as uh, the invoice type. I can send it to whichever client I need to, and then I can select that I'm sending them the package for this program um, and send it to them that way. So that's another option too. Let's say I'm in person with a client and they don't wanna pay with cash, um, but they want to gain access to that program immediately and just be charged for it. This is another option if they want to process that payment and add, uh, manage that payment on their end, I could go ahead and send them an invoice for them. And then lastly, I just wanna talk through a couple other options for viewing client status on our programs. So you can see what programs a client is enrolled in directly from their profile. So if I go into my client's profile, I first also can see what packages they have purchased. So I can see if this client has purchased any of those packages that we just built out. But I can also scroll to the bottom of their page and I can see here down at the bottom what programs they are enrolled in and their start date and their status of that program. On these three dots all the way to the right, we can view the details of their status or nudge them. So in this case, this client hasn't completed any of this program's module. Maybe I want to send them a little nudge to get started. Or I can also click view details. So here I can see the details of just this client and their status within the program. What, uh, what modules they have started, what modules they haven't, and get an overview of their individual information. I can also pull a status report on my reports page. So if I click to reports and go to the program section, I can click on client status and download a report for my programs. So once that uh, report has generated, I'll be able to pull a CSV file of all clients that are enrolled in across all of my programs and see their statuses as well for completion. And just to call out this program report will actually generate a zip file with a CSV for each program. So you'll be able to individually click into those files um, for each of your different programs and those reports will be organized that way. All right, so now we have our program built out, our package built out. Um, I just wanna know a couple more items before we dive into additional questions. First is seeing what the client will see. So of course, I always recommend um, building out a test client or a mock client account. And in this case, enrolling that client into that program so that you can click through from the client portal and see what your, your program will look like from their view, see what those notifications look like. But you can, of course, in their provider account as well, get an overview. We clicked on this uh, at the beginning of the class, but an overview of that program and get an idea of what that will look like. So. I can click on view and then maybe just click view on my very first module and I can start clicking through those modules and seeing what my clients will see as they move through it. So that's one way to get a good idea of what that program is going to look like um, for my clients. And then the other call out that we like to make is that we do offer a diabetes prevention program. Uh, program. So if you are interested in having that pre-built program added to your account, you can reach out to hello at gethealthy.com and we can certainly share it with you. You can adjust your own version of that program um, and edit it as needed, um, but definitely reach out if that diabetes prevention program is something that you are interested in learning more about. 
All right, everyone. Well, I don't see any additional questions in our chat space today. So thank you all for joining. Again, I encourage you to take a look at the rest of our live class series. Uh, we have everything from insurance billing to our packages and payments that we touched on. Um, we have part one, two, and three of just getting started and optimizing your use with Healthy. So we definitely encourage you to join those and hope to see you on those future live classes.